they all pushed me up against the wall and it was like a free-for-all for a couple of minutes and uh, each mother holding his her, her baby up into my face saying please treat my child um, unfortunately we were only there for about three days and we were only able to treat about 20 or 30 kids and the rest of the 200 were not treated and I remember leaving that experience and feeling very sad about that and deciding that I that part of my life would be helping in the developing world. Jeff's made this a, an organization that is, uh, is there to help the children. It's not for you know, touring, it's not, a, it's not a doctor's vacation program. Um, it's, uh, it's truly an organization where the kids come first. I initiated the International Children's Surgical Foundation in December 2005, and I did so with a very specific purpose. Um, when I first started volunteering full-time in 2003, I thought that the best plan was to go with the larger, more well-established groups, and I did that. Um, but on one mission with a very reputable, reputable group, I, w I stayed behind several days after the mission to take care of some of the patients and uh, a leader of the hospital approached me and asked me if I could come back by myself and teach their doctors how to do the surgeries that we'd been doing on this mission. We rotate the deficient tissues into position so that this side equals the length of this side. Rotamos los tejidos. And that told me what the need really is in the developing world. And uh, I felt that the only way that I could accomplish that and really tackle that need of teaching these doctors in a methodical way was to start my own organization, the International Children's Surgical Foundation. And that is really our chief goal, to empower and train and otherwise help doctors living in the third world to treat and take care of their own patients competently and safely, as well as providing us actually providing free reconstructive surgery to children in these countries. Okay, Tony, can you get ready with the section? Uh, I came and ICSF uh, are involved with, into take care of children with um, congenital malformations like cleft lip, cleft palate, and sequela, burn sequela. That is because um, in our population in Peru, we have so many people with this kind of deformity, and his accessibility to the health services is really um, poor. So in that way, we, we wanted to um, to give to these children a better quality of life. Early within the first trimester of development, all of us have a cleft lip actually, a two-sided cleft lip. And as we develop, the various facial elements travel together and fuse, and we become normal as we develop. But on a cleft lip, a patient with a cleft, this migration of the tissues and the fusion of the tissues fails for some reason. It could be for genetic reasons, it might be because the mother is having some nutritional deficiencies. But this deformity is basically a failure of the normal developmental process in utero.
this is an opportunity to be able to kind of pay back, I think, to the world at large for the opportunities that you have. And um, it's, a, it's an awesome experience. so many doctors to train, there's so many children to treat, and I personally get so much rewards, a little bit of a selfish endeavor.